Hello everyone and welcome to my Bible study on the book of James. Uh, we are studying about the proper perspective towards temptation. Uh, James 1 and 16 says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Uh, now that's a short verse and uh, it's all in the context again of temptation. Uh, you know, the question could be asked, what is the point? How does this statement here connect to the whole topic of temptation? Well, if you remember temptation, the battle of temptation is whether or not we're going to believe a lie, the lie or believe the truth. And this is where word translation comes in because the King James Version here and some other translations while using this word air, which is a word we don't use uh, anymore. We don't spell it that way anymore. But uh, by using that word, it doesn't really give us a full picture of what James is saying. Uh, ultimately, I want to give this to you. When James says, do not err, uh, what he is speaking of is do not believe the lie or lies of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Uh, now, where do we get that from? Well, the word err is from the Greek word pleano. And it means to be deceived. Literally, it means to believe a lie, to wonder from the truth. That's what the word pleano means. So maybe a better translation there would be, do not be, de be deceived, my beloved brethren. Do not be deceived. And uh, how that is connected to temptation? Well, again, in temptation, the real battle is Am I going to believe or am I not going to believe? And that's where deception comes. The deception is believing a lie and you think it's the truth. Uh, that's what happened to Eve. Uh, she was deceived. So again, it means to be deceived, to believe a lie, to wonder from the truth. Uh, and I want to give you some Pleiano scriptures. Uh, these are just a few of many that... Uh, that used that word pleano. Uh, it was a word that Paul used quite often, that uh, James used, and that John used, and Peter used, and uh, Jesus used. Uh, Jesus used it uh, throughout the New Testament. Uh, 1 John uh, 2 and 26, where John said this, These things have I written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. So John is saying they try to deceive you. They try to lure you away from that place of safety. Remember when James said we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own lust. And uh, that's what happened. Uh, happens through deception, uh, through the bait, through the lie. We're lured away from that place of safety that we have in Christ. Uh, grace through faith in Christ. We're lured away. And he said these things that are written you concerning those who try to deceive you. Uh, they're trying to lure you away, uh, trying to lie to you. Uh, and in, in Matthew uh, 24, 4 and 5, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I want to say this, that that's characteristic of the last day's uh, deception. People believing uh, in the lie. And in uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 13, Paul said, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, do you remember what Pleiano means? Uh, it means to be deceived, uh, to believe a lie. It means to wonder from the truth. Uh, in a sense, you can say being deceived means to wonder from our place of safety and protection and provision. And again, which is Christ, uh, to wonder away from that. And in the last days, that's one of the main characteristics is that believers wandering away from their place of safety and provision, which is Christ. So James here, when he said, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Again, it's in the whole realm of temptation. 
because in temptation we're being thrown lies, lies about sin, lies about where our source of life is, uh, lies about the pleasures of sin. Uh, well, it feels good. Oh, there's such pleasure in it and it looks good. Remember the original temptation, the fruit looked good to her eyes to make one wise, to make her like God. It looked good. It appealed good. It was appealing to the eyes, appealing to the flesh. That same thing will happen today. But when you're tempted, when you're tempted today, fight the good fight of faith. Believe, realize, yeah, it may feel good. It may look good. It may sound good. But you know what? There's nothing good in it. There's nothing good in it. And as a child of God, you and I don't need that. We have everything we need in Christ, in Christ and him and what he's done for us, in his word, uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, praise God. We don't need these things. And I'm going to mention this again, all temptation is to get the believer to believe the lie, that sin will bring life. Again, you can say there's life in self, thus changing the object of faith in Christ and the cross to a lie. And that's really where temptation, where the rubber meets the road. It's trying to draw us away by our own flesh. The lust that is in us that has been crucified with Christ, trying to awaken that lust within us, trying to get us to believe a lie. And if we can believe the lie, that lust will be awakened within us. And so the point of what James is saying here is don't believe the lie. Just keep on believing the truth. Then he said, my beloved brethren, and this is so easily for us to skip right over. In the book of James, three times he uses that term, my beloved brethren. Uh, my beloved brethren, it's so easy uh, for us to skip right by that. And what that means in a practical way is God loves you and so do I. Uh, that's the ideal, my beloved brethren. God loves you and so do I. And it's interesting how much can be packed into one little statement like that. Uh, my beloved brethren, God loves you, and so do I. And the reason why I'm telling you all this about the trials and about the temptation, and James is going to really give these recipients uh, some strong rebuke too, uh, but the reason uh, he was doing it was because he loved them. Uh, so I just say to you, uh, don't be deceived into believing a lie. And, uh, keep your faith anchored uh, in Jesus Christ and uh, his finished work, and God will see you through. And that concludes uh, my lesson on James uh, 1 and 16. God bless.